All right, so uh, again, a, sh a, sh a show of hands. Um, who here is an Android developer? All right, so mostly web guys. Um, so my name's Ernest. Uh, I'm an Android developer at Wheels Up, and um, I'm also a core organizer of GDG North Jersey. So uh, if you guys are from New Jersey by any chance, um, make sure to come by to uh, our meetup. <laughs> Um, so there, there's a, a lot to actually talk about. Um, I don't know if I can crunch everything from IO uh, that was Android related in, in five minutes, but um, I'm going to give an overview uh, that basically fits into these three groups. So the actual OS, um, the play console, and your uh, development, so things that would affect you day to day if you're an Android developer. Um, so if the OS, again, Android O, um, like the video that we saw before, um, they really concentrated on um, fluid experiences and vitals. Um, so for the fluid experiences, this is really the most user-facing, uh, I guess, changes of the OS that you're gonna see. So again, notification dots, uh, picture in picture, improved copy and paste, um, the notification uh, sorting, and autofill uh, fields. Um, so again, in that Verge video, you guys saw the notification dots um, and the picture in picture. Um, again, really quick, that's how they look. Uh, if, if you're a developer, the one thing you have to know for, for Android for notification dots is that um, they just work out of the box. There's nothing that you have to do. Um, there are things that you can do if you want to uh, manually set the count on the uh, notification when you long press on them, but by default they'll always just be a nice little dot. Picture-in-picture um, <clears throat> picture again is uh, just a, a nice easy way to uh, multitask. I think it's better than multi-window. Um, and I think Android TV uh, announced picture-in-picture picture, I think last year, so it was nice to see it to mobile this year. Um, Vitals, again, is uh, battery life. They, uh, they're they imposing um, wise limits on background work. Uh, security is one of those things that they kind of glazed over, but at the same time, uh, they're just trying to, I think now they have like a new fancy security badge uh, that they're gonna put on the Play Store so that you know it's scanning. Um, <coughs> Guys heard before startup time is uh, dramatically uh, uh, faster. Um, redesign settings, project trouble, I think, is probably one of the most understated um, changes. There's a lot of good uh, articles actually, and uh, a couple of YouTube uh, talks um, about this specifically. And uh, I mean, the, the the sum of it is that hopefully we should get uh, faster updates to Android. Um, new garbage collector, notification categories, um, and uh, if you guys are into uh, audio codecs, um, there's better Bluetooth support. Android Go is also uh, a new initiative that they have for uh, 512 megabyte to one gigabyte devices. They'll get um, an Android Go version of uh, Android, and uh, that's just supposed to uh, it's kind of their next step from their Android One initiative, which was really targeted towards like uh, emerging markets. Um, and again, the beta is available now for uh, for Android O. If you haven't gotten it already, you can opt in at the link over there, g.co slash Android beta. Uh, <clears throat> so the console, uh, so switching away from user facing uh, things. Uh, the Google Play console used to be called the Google Play developer console. Uh, they took one word out. What that means now is that uh, they, they really want it to be this uh, place that everyone kind of feels at home. Um, you know, they, they've introduced a lot of uh, a lot of new features for your uh, PMs and, and stuff like that. So uh, it's not really developer focused anymore. But there's lots of good uh, goodies if you are a developer. Um, again, so. Uh, Device catalog is, uh, in the past, if you had to, let's say, exclude like a Samsung Galaxy S7 from your 
APK for some reason, you would quickly realize that there's like 10 different versions of the Galaxy S7 for all the different like uh, system on chips. Um, so now they totally revamped the catalog. Check it out if you have it. Um, Pre-launch report, uh, report improvements. So um, again, right now, uh, if you submit your APK for a pre-launch report, you'll get uh, a couple of handy uh, statistics about it. So they added some new uh, security scans and stuff to that, um, and new devices. So like uh, the pre-launch report will actually run on an uh, Android O beta device now also. Uh, full review history for uh, comments, which is really important. Um, before, if, if any of you guys actually report to people, uh, respond to people on the Play Store, um, you'd see if they, um, you know, if they commented, hey, this is broken, and you said, oh, we fixed it, and then they went to change their review again. You didn't get a full log of that, so now you get that, which is pretty handy. Um, if someone, uh, a really great feature, I think, for developers and uh, your support team is uh, being able to flag reviews. So if someone leaves you um, a review that's not so great and it doesn't really, uh, it's not very helpful, um, then uh, you can flag that review and it'll be manually reviewed by somebody, which is pretty awesome. Um, At Google. There is a new monitor releases uh, page now, so you can go, and I think for the first seven days after a release gets, uh, uh, after one of your builds is released, then it'll give you uh, real-time info on key information. So key information they have as ratings, reviews, and crashes. So. Uh, these are some of these things that they never really committed to a timeline on before. Uh, sometimes it felt like it took an hour, sometimes it felt like it took a day. Um, uh, instant apps is also something that you can uh, enable now in the uh, Play Console and opt into. And there's uh, some more Firebase improvements and some of the uh, uh, integration there. I think Nitsch is talking about Firebase later, so she'll hopefully get to that. Um, again, uh, play consoles, a whole bunch of uh, continued stuff here. Uh, Vitals uh, gives you, right now, three categories, stability, render time, and battery performance. So it tries to, uh, you're, you don't have to do anything to your application. It'll just start giving you, uh, it'll start scanning your application um, and collecting, collecting data about your application. And then if it sees that you have uh, a ton of issues with frame rate, um, it'll report you. And if you're in the, I think, lower 25% of, let's say, um, you know, crashes or something, then you'll get flagged also. <coughs> um, again, everyone now can see performance data, so that's one of those things where they took developer out of the name, right? So now if your PMs can go in, they'll actually see that, like, uh, hey, you're having this many, um, crash reports this many drop frames, and, and again, hopefully uh, you can decide to, hey, maybe let's not release this feature, maybe let's focus on stability for, uh, for a sprint or two. Um, Opt-in reports versus individual reports. I think if you're an Android developer, this is, I think to me, it's, it's one of the biggest uh, like pain points. Um, I think when you were first starting, uh, the Play Console only gave you crash reports from uh, people that actually uh, had to knowingly hit yes, like send this specific crash report. Um, now when you set up a device and it says, hey, do you want to opt into to Google um, you know, analytics and like tracking your uh, you know, crash reporting for better system behavior? So anyone that opts into that will automatically send all of their um, crash reports and A&Rs to your uh, app dashboard, which is pretty awesome because uh, now they, they said that uh, early uh, signs are showing that there's about a 100x increase in um, reports getting to developers. So if you're not using an external tool like Crashlytics or, or Bugsnag or anything like that, um, that should be uh, really awesome for you. Um, <clears throat> there's new release notes flow, uh, if you guys do multi-language things. Uh, and put the release notes for, uh, for tons of different localizations. That's always painful. Uh, if you're on CI and you um, uh, have the CI <coughs> publish your uh, build, there's new um, API endpoints for that. Uh, app signing, also a big deal. Uh, they said that uh, a very 
constant uh, complaint about uh, developers is that they lost their signing fee, so now uh, they'll take care of that for you. And if they take care of signing your application for you, um, again, there's a little bit of a setup process, but then um, you know, if you have one of your old developers leave and one of your new guys comes on, you don't have to worry about uh, one of your old developers still having access to the key or anything like that. Um, and then also be able to do uh, some optimizations by signing your app after you upload it um, in terms of uh, reducing the, the application size. <coughs> uh, again, so, some more things with the uh, filtering rules for devices. And uh, they're now start gonna uh, start giving a crash-free user uh, rating. So if any of you guys use Crashlytics, I know that was like a, a rating that um, a lot of people liked before. Uh, but now Google owns Crashlytics, uh, so there's that. So again, um, the Play Console was totally revamped. Um, if you haven't seen it before, it's very clean and a lot more intuitive now. Um, you could probably spend uh, a whole week just kind of digging down into all of their new um, menus. Uh, again, this gives the new vitals overview. And um, like I said, right, at, right across the top there, you can see that there's an a &R rate, crash rate, uh, stuck wake locks, all these things that you get for free out of the box, which are, are pretty awesome. You don't have to add any SDK or anything. Um, it's just giving you more insight to this data that they can collect. Um, all right, so the last thing here is for uh, development. Um, so they announced Android Studio 3.0. So if you guys were using 2.4, I think 2.4 went up to uh, like Canary 7. And so now uh, they're dishing that and it's completely going to 3.0. Um, it was launched with Canary 1 as of two days ago. I think they launched Canary 3. Um, there's a whole bunch of new profilers uh, to, um, to analyze your network, CPU, and memory. Uh, there's been a whole bunch of improvements to the APK analyzer. Um, <clears throat> they added new tooling support. Um, so again, you get those system images now. And um, there's menus to walk you through the O adaptive icons um, and downloadable fonts. Uh, if any of you guys use ProGuard, um, it's a shrinker obfuscator. Um, it's been historically fairly hard to figure out and debug and come up with rules. And now um, definitely take a look at the, the talk uh, for shrinking your APK size if, if uh, you use ProGuard at all, because they go over a couple of uh, techniques to um, kind of help you uh, with that. Um, APT2 is uh, shipping in Studio 3.0. It's disabled by default, but you can turn it on because it's going to be enabled by default later. So you should turn it on now um, and at least try it out and report any bugs with it. <coughs> and also they uh, added some refactoring tools for instant apps, so to modularize your app a little bit. Um, a couple of uh, other announcements that they made were um, they added app architecture components. So uh, it's an opinionated way to make Android apps, which uh, historically they've always been unopinionated, or at least they, they've said that. So um, now you can get components for view model, data storage, and lifecycle management. Um, lots to read about and, and learn about with that. Uh, I think right before I.O., they, they launched the emulator with Play Store support. Uh, so you've never been able to get the Play Store on an emulator before, uh, but now you can. Uh, you do lose root access, but uh, it's nice to see sometimes if you have different, uh, like, uh, just to play around with the intent system if, uh, on your phone. Let's say you had your app shares to Facebook and you just want to check that integration. Uh, you could go through that. Uh, Android apps on Chromebooks are a thing, and the Chromebook emulator is finally coming soon. Um, the Maven repo is finally here also, so if, if uh, you know that the SDK manager is always a bit of a pain, especially on uh, CI, um, there's uh, maven.google.com now. Um, there's an alternative GPU renderer in the O preview, so if you have uh, the O beta on your phone, go ahead and uh, switch that on. Uh, they haven't committed to saying that that new GPU uh, renderer will be the renderer that will ship by default, but it's always good to try that and report bugs. Uh, for any of you guys that use Expresso, 
Uh, for me, this was a, a little bit of an issue before, uh, but they actually support multi-process app instrumentation now. Um, so uh, you need Android O for that, and you need the latest version of Espresso, but you'll be able to instrument between uh, uh, your app processes if you have multi-process in a single app. Um, and again, they had continued investment in existing languages, so uh, Java, Java 8 features, uh, C and C++ um, improvements. Uh, the big one, again, that uh, everyone was raving about is finally, after a very long time, um, Kotlin is a, I mean, it's always been a thing, but um, now Google's promising not to break it, which is nice. Um, uh, if you guys are interested in, in Kotlin, um, and you guys are in the New Jersey area, like I said before, uh, so GDG North Jersey is going to be having a Kotlin meetup uh, fairly shortly. Um, so let me know uh, if you're interested in that. And that's all I have. Thanks. I have Kotlin stickers if you guys are in the